Living Seed Media brings to you God's Word, which is His comprehensive equipment for changing lives. May the Lord impact your heart as you encounter His Word. For further inquiry or counsel, contact Peace House, P.O. Box 971, Boko, Benue State, Nigeria. Telephone numbers 0703-0363659-0808-5150-610. Email address lsmedia at livingseed.org or visit our website at www.livingseed.org. Let us sit back and listen as the servant of God brings forth the word of life. Shall we pray together? And so, God, we thank you for your loving kindness. Thank you, Lord, for bringing us to this point again in your presence. Our Father, as we open into scriptures, we ask that the spirit of truth will come on us all. We pray, Father, that everyone listening to us we have a peculiar understanding of your word today. And God, you will cause this word to mix with faith in each of our hearts such that we will grow thereby. We are trusting that in everything you might build up your church in our own generation. Thank you, Father, for we have prayed in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank God for this opportunity to be with you again uh, on this program, Living Seed. We, we bless the Lord for how he has been leading us. Last week, we began to look at the, the series on spiritual warfare and we are trusting that God will grant us the grace to look at what the issues of spiritual warfare is all about. We are trusting also that by the time we have gone through this series with you, especially those of you that we make a habit of listening to us very regularly and from week to week, we are trusting that God will make you victorious. God, we have revealed to you the devices, the tricks, the strategies the devil had used successfully for several thousands of years to confuse men and to make men to lose out on the purpose of God for their lives right from the Garden of Eden. And we are trusting that as you understand the devices of the enemy, God will place upon your hand the weapons the weapons of our own warfare, effective weapons that God has provided for every believer to be victorious and to actually overcome. This we are trusting God to grant unto you. So I want you to again turn your Bible with us onto the book of First Peter chapter 5. We referred to that scripture last week, but we still believe that there are still some little things we need to press out of that scriptures, trusting God to grant us the general basis, foundation for spiritual warfare. And I'm trusting that God will help us as we go along in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I'd like you to turn your Bibles to uh, 1 Peter chapter 5, and I would like you to read it from, again, we read from verse 5 to verse 11. But today we are going to be commenting particularly on verse 8 verse 9, trying to understand what exactly is ahead of us. Now, the Bible says from verse 5, Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yes, all of you be subject one to another, and be clothed with humility. For God resisted the proud, and gave grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he cared for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a running lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour, whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. But the God of all grace, who has called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that you have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, and set to you. The God 
uh, grant us understanding of his word in Jesus' name. Now, <clears throat> looking at this particular scripture, uh, as God has provided it for us, there are a few things, general things, we will be saying today concerning the spiritual warfare that confronts every believer. Uh, last week, I particularly spent time looking at verse 5, verse 6, and verse 7, trying to see that ever before you come forward for spiritual warfare, ever before you think of the battle ahead of our lives, you need to first of all keep yourself in order in the presence of God. You need to have a meaningful relationship with the Lord Jesus. You need to have a constant supply of the grace of God into your life. Otherwise, you are not fit even for spiritual warfare. You are already a piece of bread. Any man whose relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ is faulty or shaky, any man who has not received grace, grace to say no to ungodliness, grace to say no to sin, grace to say no unto the things that come in between you and the Lord, of course, you have lost the battle. Any man who has been defeated within himself, how can he stand on the outside? Any man who had been divided inside of himself, inside of his heart, he himself has lost confidence in working with God. He has lost confidence in relating with the Lord Jesus Christ. He cannot boldly stand up and say, I am so glad I belong to Jesus. You cannot stand up and boldly say, yes, I thank God Jesus is with me today. Because sin has come into your life. There is no way you can stand out there trying to attack the devil. No way. You better don't even try it. You are already a piece of bread in his hand. So we felt, as we look at that scripture, that the elders who went before us, they didn't take it for granted. They felt it was necessary to give certain instructions to prepare us and to help our hearts get ready for the spiritual warfare. So I like to repeat again. It says, be clothed with humility or put humility on as an apron. For God resisted the proud and gave grace to the humble. Now in your own personal life, in your own personal relationship with God, in your own heart, the attitude you need to have for God to support you in spiritual warfare, for God to back you up, for the whole heavens to stand behind you is that, is that attitude of humility. If you want God to stand with you, and of course, if God doesn't stand with a man, there is nothing he can do against the devil. If God departs from a man, sorry for him, his defense has departed. If God never, never identifies with you publicly and secretly, then you have nothing you are saying. The devil will take you for a ride, and there's nothing that will come out of it. But in order for God to stand with you, in order for God to walk with you, you need to put on humility as, as, as your life. You need because that is the only thing that attracts the grace of God. The Bible says, Humble yourself therefore under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. I want to emphasize that before I go on. I would like to say that we don't need to be careless with our lives. We don't need to be careless with our relationship with the Lord Jesus. If for nothing else, the enemy is outside there seeking somebody to devour. Now, apart from those that are even standing well, living right, and living above sin, the devil is still seeking how to attack them, how to defraud them. That's one thing that I want you to know about spiritual warfare. This spiritual warfare that we are looking at, as I will be talking to you about the enemy very soon, you will realize that no man is, has been able to graduate from it. There is nobody the devil doesn't attempt. Are you understanding me? There's no man the devil doesn't attempt. He even was bold enough to attempt Jesus. He went and tempted Jesus. He was going to lure Jesus onto some certain misbehaviors so as to rob him of his eternal inheritance. If the devil was bold enough, to go and attempt Jesus. And I wish you know that the word temptation also has the same root with the word attempt. The devil 
he always comes with several attempts attempts and there's no man that he thinks he cannot attempt and therefore my friend even if you're a great preacher even if anointing have been flowing in your life like fire even if thousands have been saved by your preaching never never forget that the devil doesn't fear to to make an attempt he will still make an attempt he will make some certain suggestions now what am i saying even those that are standing where the devil attempts them those that are walking right with god the enemy will attempt them how much less those men that are already defeated inside how much less those of you that are broken the walls that god has built around you the bible said whosoever breaketh a wall serpent shall bite him now as a general attitude in preparation for spiritual warfare the Bible says, Be clothed with humility, for God resisted the proud and gave grace to the humble. You needed the grace of God in your life. You needed the power of God. I mean, you need the power of God in your life. You need the grace of God in your life before you can stand up to fight any battle. And if you are not going to lose, this is a prerequisite. And as I saw uh, the elders uh, reminding us, admonishing us I want to also drop it with you now, that in order for you to be fit for spiritual warfare, in order for you to be fit, I'm not even talking of how you are going to fight but I'm talking about how to be fit how to make sure that God is with you, how to make sure that the almighty God is on your side then the first thing to do is to put on humility the Bible says God resisted the proud. It means that when a man is proud, he has double battles. He has double battles. And later on, when we begin to deal with the strategies the devil uses in fighting us, you will see one of it. He wants to make sure that if he can conquer you, he creates enmity between you and God. The Bible said when a man is proud, he has two battles to fight apart from the devil now god himself resisted him now how will you put yourself in a situation where god who is supposed to be your refuge who is supposed to be your support who is supposed to be your lord who is supposed to be your father how will you position your life that god will not turn to your enemy to turn to be your enemy how will you position your life that god will have occasion to stand against you how will you position your life that God himself will be the one to resist you, to resist your progress, to resist your power, I mean to resist everything you are doing. How will you do that? And that's the situation a proud man is. Ever before you come forward to attempt spiritual warfare, I want to ask you, is your life correct? Are you walking in humility? Are you a proud man? Are you assuming on your strength? The last time we spoke about Peter, we said very, very clearly that the reason why Peter missed it was that he trusted in himself. He was self-confident. He was overconfident. Even when Jesus said, I pray for you, he said, you better don't worry about that. If all others desert you, I will never, never desert you. I will actually die for you. That was what Peter said. He, he forgot that without the power of God, he couldn't stand. When a man is proud, God is all out to pull him down. Friend, are you a preacher and you are beginning to be proud? Are you getting elated because of the audience around you? Are you getting elated because money is coming into your hand right now, oh young man? Are you a businessman? You are now, I now see you expanding because some little, little money is coming to your hand and you are beginning to be proud. You have double battles. You have double battles, and this is more serious. For God to resist a man, I don't know who can deliver him. If God decides to stand against you, I don't know where you can run again. When God condemns a man, who will ever be able to vindicate him? And when God decides to wreck a man, who can build him up? Impossible. When the word of God talked about Jericho, and God decided to wreck Jericho, do you know what God said? He said, anybody that tries to build it again, he will, he will lay the foundation of Jericho in his own first son, and himself is going to die with it. 
So when God resists a man, I don't know who can help him. My friend, don't try it. Brother, don't try it. Oh, sister, don't try it. Put on humility as an apron. Humble yourself under the power of God. Keep, I mean, keep, keep yourself under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you. Now, all these are necessary injunctions and instructions to make you fit for, the, for this battle. All I'm saying today is this. Before we go forward onto spiritual battle, there is need to ensure that God is on our side. There is need to ensure that we are not just going empty-headed. That we are not just going on assumption. We are not just being presumptuous. It will be suicidal for me to ask you to go and fight the devil when God is against you. When God is against you, don't try it. And I want to say so many people are in danger today because they never take time to restore their relationship with the Lord. They never take time to look at what Jesus we want them to do in life. And I say to you, friend, are you doing business? Ever before you launch out in your business, the enemy is out there to frustrate your business. How much more when God is now against you? How much more when God is now there to resist you because you have violated his word and because you are arrogant about it? Won't you humble yourself this hour? Won't you tell Jesus, Lord, I want to walk with you. One hymn writer says, If you want God to walk with you from morning to evening, if you want God to go with you every time, there is a rule that each day you must follow. Humble yourself to walk with God. Humble yourself and the Lord will draw near you. Humble yourself and his presence will cheer you. God cannot walk with the proud and the scornful. Humble yourself to walk with God. Now this is a necessary prerequisite for spiritual warfare. And I'm praying that you get it. And you will meet up to that, that condition in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That is very, very important. Now let's go on very quickly right now to verse 8 and verse 9. Still trying to introduce you to the general issues concerning spiritual warfare. Now, the word of God said in verse 8, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. Now, I want us to spend a little time on that scripture as a general uh, introduction, as a general foundation to spiritual warfare. And what does the Holy Spirit want us to understand about this? The Bible wants you to know that the first danger in spiritual warfare is to be ignorant that there is an enemy. The first terrible, terrible mistake that most men have made, that most Christians have made, is that they live their lives as if they are in their father's house alone. They wake up as if they are in the midst of their friends. But the word of God wants you to know this day that you are not in the midst of your friends. That you are not in the midst of every man that is looking for your, your progress. The Bible says, be sober, be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil. Many of us, we are living as if the devil is not around. Many of us, we play into dangerous grounds. We play with very, 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 very slippery things in our lives. As though the enemy is not around, but he is there. Look at what the Bible says. It says, be sober, be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, as a running lion walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. Be sober, be vigilant. That's very, very important. Ever before you launch into spiritual warfare, you need to first of all settle this issue. Settle this matter in your heart. Understand what exactly God is talking about. That there is an enemy. That enemy is not a human being. It's not flesh and blood that you are struggling with. But then look at the way the word of God says, say your adversary, your opponent. He had made sure that it won't be well with you. He had made sure that you will not progress. He had made sure you will not make it. And the word of God said, be sober, be vigilant. 
because your adversary, the devil, as a running lion, what does he do? He walks about. That's very important for you to understand today. The devil, our enemy, he is not stationed somewhere. He is not settled in one place. Are you understanding? He, you, you may be thinking that, oh, there is one headquarter where the devil is sitting. And anytime you want to meet the devil, go there. No, that's not the understanding the Bible is giving us today. The word of God says, your enemy, the devil, what does he do? As a running lion, he walks about. He walks about, left and right, up and down, to and fro. He walks about. And what is he looking for? Seeking whom he may devour. I want to take that from other versions so that you can understand. And as we pray together today, you might know that at your working place, there is an enemy who is roaming around, who is walking up and down, seeking nothing but you. Looking for nothing but what to devour. Looking for nothing but what to steal, what to kill, and what to destroy. Ever before you launch into spiritual warfare, you need to have this understanding. Some people have lived their lives. Some don't even believe that there is a devil. Some think that all this kind of thing about demons, about devil, is just ordinary psychological fear. No, my friend. The devil is a personality and it is very real is walking. Even right now as I'm talking, he might be there walking on your heart, blocking you and saying, don't mind all those kind of things. Don't mind what they are talking about. That's just an ordinary idea. It's not an idea. Whether you know it or not, whether you're a psychologist and you say all those things can be explained away by emotions, by mind and all that, I tell you, that doesn't make you diverge of the activity of the devil in your own house. That doesn't stop the devil working on your heart. Whether you believe there is devil or no devil, that doesn't affect him. He is there, walking up and down, roaming up and down, coming to and fro, seeking whom he may devour. Now, let's look at it from other versions. First Peter chapter 5. I want to take it with you right now, very quickly, from William's translation, verse 8. Above everything, Above everything, become an alert. Your opponent, the devil, I think you understand now. You have an opponent. What is the work of an opponent? That which opposes progress. That which always, sarcastically, does everything to pull you down, to confuse you, and to relegate you, and to wreck you, your opponent. is always planning how to score a goal into your life and turn you a disgraced element. That's what the devil is looking for. Your opponent, the devil, is always prowling about like a roaring lion, trying to devour you. You need to know that. That's a piece of information you need to know. Every one of us, man or woman, preacher or ordinary lay members of the church, any man at all who is planning to go to heaven, any woman at all who is wanting to make the kingdom of God. Even those of you that don't know about the Lord Jesus Christ, the devil is still your enemy. He might be pretending to be your friend because he wants to take you to hell. He is still there. He's the same. Seeking someone to devour. Seeking how to destroy, how to kill, and how to steal the things that God has placed in your life. Let me take that also from another version. I want you to check Beck's translation. The Beck's translation says, Keep a clear head. Keep a clear head and watch. Your enemy, the devil, is prowling around like a devouring, I mean, like a running lion, looking for someone to devour. You see what the word of God says? Keep a clear head. Don't be confused. Don't be careless. Keep a clear head. Be sober. Be vigilant. Have a clear spirit. Know that as you are moving, somebody is dodging your steps. Somebody is besetting you with all kinds of traps just to trap your life, just to catch you. He's putting deceit and all kinds of things just to devour your life. I wish if you know that even now, 
it will be enough for us. If God can give you this understanding and for you to be conscious that someone is not happy when your prayer life is going well. If you are living well with your wife as a husband, you should recognize that the enemy is seeking out to devour your home. And so many times when there is a little quarrel between you and your wife, the devil is there putting fuel putting fuel on that fire and say scatter it if the woman doesn't want to concentrate no problem you will marry another one it's your enemy it's your enemy madam i would like to tell you even though you are happy today somebody is moving around and around your house trying to spy out your liberty seeking out to enter into your home and devour it and destroy it i wish you will have this kind of knowledge right now i wish God is going to help you to know that you don't have to be careless. You have to keep a clear head. You have to keep a clear head. You have to be focused in your heart. As a man, as a woman, as a Christian, as a brother, as a sister, as a preacher, and as a listener, our friends that are listening to us there, keep a clear head. Don't be clumsy-headed. Are you hearing me? Don't be clumsy. Don't be clumsy because... Satan, your enemy, is seeking whom to devour. Is seeking somebody to destroy. Satan, your enemy, is going anywhere, looking everywhere. Uh, by the time we come back on this issue, uh, trusting God in the next edition of this program, and believing that God will help us to see the portrait of this enemy, and what does he do, and how does he do it. But finally, what does the word of God say? Uh, you should do about this issue. Now, Amplify Version. I read it and then conclude here. The Bible said, be well balanced. Be well balanced. Be temperate. Be sober-minded. Be vigilant and cautious at all times. For that enemy of yours, the devil, he roams around like a lion, running in fierce hunger, seeking someone to seize upon and devour. We stand him. Be firm in faith against this onslaught, rooted, established, strong, immovable, and determined, knowing that the same identical sufferings are appointed to your brotherhood, the whole body of Christians throughout the whole world. I want you to know that because this battle is not for you alone, all of us are in it. You don't have to give up as if you are alone. You don't have to think that, oh, the devil alone on you. No, it's on all of us. Every one of us, including me as I preach to you here, I know I have an enemy, and that enemy is Satan the devil. May God help you to keep a clear head. How do you keep a clear head? One, don't allow a loophole between you and Jesus. Don't allow sin to come between you and the Savior. Don't allow any cloud, any darkness, any compromise between you and Jesus. And if you have not maintained a relationship with the Master, I want you to kneel down now. And say, Jesus, I am in a dangerous condition. My house is open. There is a hole into my, into my life. Lord Jesus, come and block it. And as you do that, God will bless you now in the name of Jesus.